Hello, welcome back to another video. Today I'll be covering what's new in GIMP 2.10.38. This is a very small release version, so there's not much to cover. The main event though is that they have backported Windows Ink support to this version. What that means is that tablets should now properly work drawing tablets. I did have to install the Wacom driver, that is not GIMP's fault. But once I got the Wacom driver installed, this did seem to work for the most part. So I am using a tablet right now, and what you can do is go to edit, preferences and if I scroll down here to input devices you'll now see we have the option pointer input API and you can go with WinTab which is like the legacy version or you can go with Windows Ink which is what newer versions of Windows use and click OK you will have to restart GIMP if you are doing this for the first time and now if I go to edit input devices You'll see I have a bunch of device options. This doesn't look right. I don't know if that's GIMP or if that is Windows, uh, but you will see that I have the uh, Wacom tablet stuff down here. So it looks like we have some generic Windows stuff and then we have Wacom specific tablet. Uh, so I'm gonna exit out of here. So I do have the paintbrush selected here and under dynamics, I have this set to pressure size. So this did not work in previous versions of GIMP. And what's supposed to happen is that if I gently paint, it's supposed to be smaller, which indeed it looks like that's what's happening. And then when I press down a little more, you'll see that the size of my paintbrush gets larger. That is exactly what is supposed to happen. So that appears to now finally be working. I know a lot of people comment on this and get frustrated that it doesn't work properly. Now it does appear to work. I'll hit control Z and we can also change this to just a more generic basic dynamics. And you can see with that, I believe there's some uh, opacity here. So as I add pressure, it gets darker. If I paint a little more softly, it gets lighter. Let's just increase the hardness here, increase the force. So again, painting softly, painting a little harder, change the color, color to black there. So you can see it a little better. And if I paint faster, you'll see we get thinner strokes there. It just kind of gets discontinued in this case. And then when I paint slower, we get nice fat strokes. So that appears to be working. What's also supposed to work is the buttons on the uh, tablet. So my Wacom tablet has four buttons on the top. It has a scroll wheel and then four on the bottom. One thing I've noticed is the scroll wheel, aside from the brush size, which does work, uh, my scroll wheel doesn't work. So when I set this to rotate, I'm using the scroll wheel, nothing happens. Auto scroll zoom, that you can see it's affecting this dialogue over here, but it's not really doing what I would expect, which is to zoom in and out when I scroll on my wheel. And then cycle layers, I have that selected now. So when I'm scrolling around with the wheel, nothing's happening with my layers over here. So I don't think that portion is working properly. However, the buttons do seem to work. So if I click settings, you can see we can turn touch on or off. So I have touch on right now. And one thing I noticed that does work, I'm using my finger right now to move the uh, mouse cursor around. And then if I pinch zoom, that actually does work as well. So the touch appears to work now. That's not something I believe was working before. Uh, precision mode that allows me to paint in a precise area and make very small mouse movements. Display toggle is only relevant when I have multiple screens, but we do have shift control alt and pan slash scroll. So shift control alt, those key modifiers. If I were to paint on here and then hold shift, it'll draw in straight line mode. So that does work. And the control key, that's gonna bring up the color picker tool. That works as well. And then the alt key, if I were to alt click on this layer, we get the selection area. So that also works. Pan and scroll did not appear to work, but again, pinch zoom works, so that's pretty cool. So it is an improvement over what it was before. It is not totally perfect, but I think people who use GIMP for digital painting will be happy with this improvement. And these are all coming to GIMP 3.0 as well. So I'll hit Control Shift A. So GIMP 3.0 should have better tablet support as we've known for a little while now. And I'm here on the release notes because I do wanna get into some GIMP 3.0 news. I know a lot of you guys are asking, uh, but for one, bug fixes, they also had some bug fixes in this version to try to just improve GIMP overall. They've got some release stats here. You can see they've had some commitments from new developers. So Alex saw 
I mean, he's not new. He's a CMYK student. He's been working on GIMP for, I don't know, a couple of years now. But it's good to see that he has really taken up the helm on this. He's contributing a lot more, so he's kind of taking some of the burden off of Yihan, which is uh, one of the main developers for GIMP. He is really shouldering a lot of the burden of getting GIMP 3.0 out. So it's good to see another developer taking the onus here and uh, working on GIMP. And obviously there's other developers also helping out. So he's not alone. Uh, he's got some help. Good to see it there. And I think a lot more developers are working on GIMP 3.0, which is why there's so few on this particular release version. And then coming down here to team news, you can see Idris from 2023 GSOC Google Summer of Code has been granted developer access. That is great news. That means they've converted another GSOC contributor to somebody who's gonna be uh, contributing to GIMP potentially long-term. So obviously GIMP needs more developers. Great to see that. And so down here is probably what you guys are waiting on. What's next? So this is some GIMP 3.0 news. And you can see here, they admit this is clearly one of the smallest releases ever for GIMP 2.10. Very light on features, which is fine because I know they're working hard on GIMP 3.0, which is what we wanna see. And you'll see here, they say they might do a 2.10.40 release with bug fixes only just before or just after GIMP 3.0 release as a wrap up. Hopefully it'll be just after because honestly, I just wanna see GIMP 3.0. I don't particularly wanna see another GIMP 2.10 release. And then you'll see here, it says they are stopping backporting features in GIMP 2.10. So they're not gonna waste any more time working on GIMP 2.10. It's all in on GIMP 3.0 at this point. And then it says here now, you might wonder when that is very soon. So as is the norm with GIMP, no real timelines kind of an annoying aspect of GIMP's development at this point, because I think there are plenty of other software out there that do create deadlines and meet those deadlines. WordPress is probably the best example. They will plan to the day when they're going to release their next version, and then they do release it on that day. GIMP could adopt some of that. I did do a poll on my channel and ask people, should GIMP have release dates based on a specific day or just release the next version when it's ready? Most people said that GIMP should just stick to releasing it when it's ready. So maybe we could take a hybrid approach and just get better estimates as to when GIMP is coming out, GIMP 3.0 in this case. And it says they're on the last sprint towards the release candidate. So of course you do release candidate one, usually a release candidate two, and then the actual GIMP 3.0 would come out. So this includes a lot of bug fixes, but also still some API changes going on. We'll keep you updated. So the updates are usually pretty sparse, but if I come over to the GIMP developer page and look at the GIMP 3.0 roadmap, you could see they're done with GTK3, done with this, whatever this is, port to Mason build. So what is still a work in progress, redesign API for scripts plugins. I did read that existing scripts and plugins for GIMP 2.10 crashed in GIMP 3.0. They didn't really work. I don't know how big of an effort they are making towards actually getting legacy plugins to work in GIMP 3.0, if they're trying to make as little plugins break as possible, or if they're just going to accept that everything's gonna break with GIMP 3.0 and people will basically start over. Maybe that's what this is. So they're still working on Wayland support and they're still working on Space Invasion, which is the CMYK related updates. Multi-layer selection, they are done with that. So most code is multi-layer aware. They're working on getting rid of floating selections. I think that's just something that's been a user experience thorn in people's sides. They just don't like that feature, so they're getting rid of it. And they're still working on documentation. I would hope documentation could wait till after GIMP 3.0's release. I'm sure it's not a huge priority, but they're showing it here still as a work in progress. And then one last thing I wanna note, this is the timeline that they put out and they've been updating this because they've been behind on getting this thing out. So right now they have it as July for GIMP 3.0 string freeze and API freeze and it is not checked, so that's not done. Then it just says soon for GIMP 3.0 RC1, not gonna lie, that is super annoying to me because I feel like they're just kind of making things up in the air and uh, removing accountability. I just think they need to get this done at this point. If we come back to my video where I cover this, you can see they originally had end February for GIMP 3.0 RC1 and mid January for the string freeze. So February, that was five months ago. So they are five months late on RC1. That's pretty bad. And they did have March, April for GIMP 2.10.38. This came out in late May. So they were about a month to two months late on that. And then they said before May 9 for the GIMP 3.0 release, 
Now they don't even have it on here, they just have it saying soon. So anyway, I'm hopeful that they're gonna get this thing out by the end of the year at this point. Pretty low bar. I do think let's sit here and estimate when we could potentially see GIMP 3.0. So let's say it's been two months since, almost two months since GIMP 2.10.38 was released. They tend to do release versions about four months apart on a good day. So let's say we got two more months until RC1. That gets us to end of September. Uh, and then let's say it takes about two weeks to do RC2, which is pretty optimistic, I think. And then maybe another two weeks until we get 3.0. So we're looking at somewhere around October, December, so end of the year. And that to me is a pretty optimistic view. Who knows, maybe they're about to release it as I'm making this video and uh, hopefully they'll make me look foolish. I would actually prefer that. But as I commented on a Libre graphics meeting video, I believe that's where I commented it. I think GIMP developers, the community of people voluntarily working on this, need to just get out an MVP or minimum viable product. Don't worry about it being perfect. If it's got bugs, that's fine, we can fix them. I think people would prefer to use a buggy GIMP 3.0 at this point and then start getting out iterations quickly to fix those bugs rather than waiting months and months and years for GIMP 3.0 to come out. But anyway, that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to be notified each time I have a brand new tutorial. You can check out any of the links to my resources in the description of the video. But thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.